you feel that our generation feels entitled to have or possess a lot of material things of this world? Or do you think our generation tends to be grateful for what we have? I think they feel entitled for it because a lot of kids don't uh, appreciate it like they should. People, on the most part, my age at least, tend to be feel like they're entitled to it. People need to be more grateful and I think once people start to be more grateful that there will be a, a better change in society. There's some on both sides I would say. If they work hard they think it's theirs. They should have the right to own it or possess it, um, whatever it is. The majority um, feels very entitled um, to material or just a way of certain way of life because they haven't known any different. A lot of things that we do have nowadays we don't earn it and we're not as hard working as uh, other generations were. I feel that our generation is cocky and they don't appreciate much and they just take for granted what they have and don't realize that some people don't have what they have. I would definitely say that our generation is very entitled to things that they don't really deserve, either because they're lazy or because they don't work hard. I definitely feel like our generation is more apt to feeling entitled to something they get than gratitude. I try not to feel entitled to things, but I also feel like it sometimes can be human nature to just like, oh, well, I deserve it, so I'm entitled to it. Have you ever seen a little kid at the toy store who saw something and wanted it immediately and began pestering his parents to buy it? We may or may not have done this as kids ourselves, but we can certainly relate to the idea of wanting something badly. We can almost justify to ourselves and others that we deserve what we want whether it's a toy, new clothes, certain friends, or good grades. We can easily become obsessed with what we want, and at the same time, we can be unwilling to recognize and do the work necessary to have those things. We could feel entitled to our wants where we forget the people and good things we already have in our lives. An entitled generation shows some gratitude. That's what we'll be talking about today. Hi everyone, I'm Maddie. And I'm Nick. And, and this, this is, is Real Faith, Faith TV. TV. Most of the teens on the street thought of their generation as feeling entitled rather than grateful for the things they have. We'll talk with them more in a few minutes, as well as meet our studio guests. But first, let's meet our spotlight guest, Colleen Paris. Colleen is a theology teacher and campus minister at Immaculata High School in Somerville, New Jersey. She will share what entitlement means for today's young people and how it's become an accepted norm in our culture. When I hear the word entitlement, I tend to think that um, people have the mentality of having the right to things without having earned them at all. I think a lot of the times our society provides us with the mentality that we have the right to be the best or look the best or have the most expensive things and we expect to just be given those things without doing anything to work for them. In some ways it's how people were raised that they feel entitled to have these things. Um, but I also think it's the pressure of society, the way that people um, are expressing the, in themselves, that we feel valuable if we have things to value. And so no matter how they're uh, being raised in their household, we feel like everyone around us outside of our household or outside of our church is saying, you have the right to this, so do whatever you need to do to get it. Teenagers tend to always feel the need to have the material possessions, to feel entitled that it belongs to them. Um, and, and it's hard to get past that mentality because everything they watch or listen to or see on television or wherever it's presented to them, that is the mentality. It's a major pressure for teenagers today, but I think that they really can recognize their longing for something more. Our culture today is, <sighs> very um, egotistical. We're always taking selfies and we're always posting videos of ourselves and it's, it's the idea that I am the greatest and when people recognize that in me, then I just feel I'm that much greater. And it empowers us in such a false sense of security in the idea that um, we have the right to own or possess whatever we can because it gives us more popularity, it gives us more power. I feel like Colleen was saying that our generation is just like so needy like and I guess in a way and oftentimes it, it's true because like if say a new phone comes out or something we want it, we have to have it like in order to feel valued, we need things to value. So she's, she's right. I agree. Let's see what our studio guests have to say. Okay, they are Lauren, Emily, Charles, 
Drew. And Rebecca. What's the difference between what you earn and what you feel you're entitled to? Well, in my school, in one of my classes, I had an 89%. Well, that counts as a B. And for me to have an A, I would need an 89.45%. I emailed my teacher asking if I could, um, she could bump me up just 0.5%. But she said, she told me that that's the grade you earned and it wouldn't be fair to the other students if you were to get an A while others worked for that A. So I felt like I was entitled to get that A because of the hard work I put in. It just wasn't the full thing, so I earned that B, unfortunately. I know a lot of 17-year-olds, they feel that they're entitled to getting their license, um, but like, without practicing and without you know, driving on your permit and like, learning the ropes, you're not going to pass your driver's test and then you're not going to get your license, which leads to you being unhappy. So I feel like even though we feel like we're entitled to it, we still have to earn it. I was watching a show the other day and it was about Sweet Sixteens and these girls, when they turned 16, they felt like they were entitled to getting the most expensive luxury cars on the market. Their parents were giving them what they wanted even though they had done nothing to earn it other than having lived 16 years. It's not difficult to see why our generation has been dubbed the entitlement generation. The New York Times defines this generation as having a very inflated sense of self that leads to unrealistic expectations and ultimately chronic disappointment. We may think the world revolves around us and think we are amazing in a prideful sense. Of course, we are made in God's image, which is amazing indeed. However, God wants us to use the gifts and talents we have for service, not to just get by doing the minimum. While not every teenager and 20-something thinks like this, it is a growing trend. One that affects us whether we want to admit it or not. Next. Colleen talks to us about what she thinks every individual is really entitled to. And how a constant need for material things will not lead to enriching our personal lives. I think every person is entitled to have a home, is entitled to have food and, and clothing, is entitled to have education, healthcare, the basic needs. But beyond that, the things that we feel we desire so much are usually the things we put most emphasis on what we're entitled to have. And in a lot of ways, those are the things that don't really matter, that we convince ourselves we need, but aren't things that are going to enrich our lives, especially during the formational years of being a teenager. We're constantly looking for a sense of identity and a sense of worth. And it's very easily filled by finding something in a store or something that's being advertised. Um, but we all know that when we get that, we, we don't care about it, you know, for a long period of time. It's on to the next. There's a real sense of value in waiting for something or saving up for something or holding out to get something because then we begin to recognize or ask ourselves, is it worth it? You know, is it that important for me? If I don't get it now, will I still still want it in a month or two months, whatever it may be. That's definitely countercultural. This, our society doesn't say to do that. Immediate gratification is everywhere around us. It's become second nature to us. Growing up, I very much had the mentality that I should have what everybody else had. I was very selfish. I was very um, unappreciative of what my parents have provided for me. Um, I lived very strongly with the expectation that I should just be given whatever I wanted. And uh, it, it wasn't real. I know um, there was this saxophone solo written for a marching band music. And I had really felt so entitled to it because I'm, I'm a senior. I'm one of the most experienced players in the whole um, group. I say, it should have been my solo, you know, it was very entitled, but I really didn't work for it. And so, but for another instance, I wanted to get into this really elite chorus group, and I practiced for months and months and months before the audition, and I made it in this year, which was one of the best experiences of my life. And it just shows, like, hard work versus being entitled to something where that can get you. Another thing is like friendship or trustworthiness. You can't just be entitled to get it. You have to earn it. You really can't go up to someone in the hallway and pretend they're like best friends with you. 
it doesn't work like that. You need to have like a true friendship and you have to earn it before you just receive it. For me personally, um, I work at a restaurant. I bus tables and apart from having long hours, I have the afternoon shift, meaning that sometimes I can't go hang out with my friends or have a sleepover with a friend because I'm working. And I feel like I'm entitled to be paid more money because of these reasons, but that's not what I earned. I know that I earned the paycheck that I'm getting and it just, it just doesn't work out the way that I want it to be. Emily, like you were saying, I don't always feel entitled to like material things, but sometimes like emotional ones. Like I always think of like Evan Almighty, uh, where he goes, God, give me patience now. And God goes, Do you, are, are you given patience or are you given the opportunity to be patient? And I think it's like that, like you were saying, with tr trust like a friendship. I think like, like, you know, for courage in a situation, you need the opportunity to be courageous. It's not just given to you. You have to, like, work for it. Um, this past year, I auditioned for a school musical, and I really didn't take the audition seriously. I learned the, learn I learned the words that day before, and I hadn't really gone through it. So my audition was all right, but I didn't get a big role, and that really taught me, you know, to take things seriously, you know, to work for something if I really want it. Gratitude directs us to ask God what He wants for our lives. Rather than focusing on what we don't have and experiencing anxiety and worry, gratitude helps us trust that God will provide for our true needs. Instead of being lazy towards work and school, gratitude helps us apply ourselves to the best of our ability. Which, in turn, enables us to live out our vocation as a student and worker in the way God desires. Next, let's go back to the teens on the street where we asked them what they were grateful for. Let's check it out. My friends and family. Family, uh, my girlfriend, uh, sports teams. This being healthy and athletic. Uh. My house, my family, my gr great friends, my school. I'm grateful for staying safe during such hard times like the hurricane or even just hard times economically and whatnot. Being healthy and being in a good school and home. My family my friends and I'm grateful to be in college. For being like at UW-Madison, I actually got like a full ride scholarship there, so I'm actually very grateful. For me, I'd have to say crew because um, we get to come out here and spread God's word and just reach out to people. And I just noticed how I have a huge passion for that this summer. Definitely my life overall, being able to live on this earth. Ultimately, just like the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. I am so thankful for his love and just caring for us to have a relationship with us. I think that's so um, awesome and I'm really grateful. I don't know where my life would be without um, God. One of the gifts I'm most grateful for from God is probably just like the gift of forgiveness just because I mean there's things daily that I need to be forgiven for and so I'm so grateful that he is a forgiving God and that he you know loves us and forgives us no matter what we do as long as we ask for it so I feel like that is probably the biggest thing I'm grateful for and just his love in general. As the Catechism of the Catholic Church states every joy and suffering every event and need can become the matter for thanksgiving which sharing in that of Christ should fill one's whole life. This is a radical perspective because this entitlement attitude rejects suffering and difficulty. But our faith embraces it because we follow Christ's example as He embraced suffering. It can actually be a relief to unite our struggles with Him rather than carry them all alone. Next, Colleen shares with us how we should never be discouraged or feel alone when we fail or lose. And how we need to recognize that the gifts that have been given to us can be easily taken away. Sometimes it's okay to fail and it's okay to know that you're not great at doing that. That's what helps us feel like, you know, I need someone else or I need help in this. And when we feel we're afraid to ask for help, we feel like we have to do it all on our own. And then we start to create this mindset in ourselves that we are able to do it all on our own. And that's, that's not truth. I think holding stronger values in terms of following rules and setting rules and saying no is really where we need to begin for people to stop feeling so entitled and hopefully then, then they'll understand that not everything comes so easily and not everything comes your way even when you do work for it. Sometimes it's just about working hard and not the reward. It's very easy even for me to get caught up in a world where I believe that this is just what I've worked for. This is what I deserve. 
I try to remind myself that there are so many people in this world who are just as important as I am that have maybe nothing of what I have or very little of what I have. And the more I can remember that, the more I recognize that I've done nothing to deserve my lifestyle. I've done nothing to deserve the love of my family. It's been gifted to me. And as that gift, it's, it's my duty and my responsibility to ex express my gratitude, to be able to say thank you and to use that as a means of giving to those who are also in need of it. And even still today, I'm sure there are so many things that happen in my life that I forget to say thanks for, especially when we become so accustomed to something, um, whether it be our family or going to school or um, our friendships, we, we think that's normal. And so we don't really recognize what a gift it is until something challenges it or something may threaten its security in our lives. Even if you don't succeed in something that you're trying for, what do you learn? You learn from the experience, you learn what you did good and what you need to work on. I think it still uh, builds up your character and in a way it can motivate you to, um, in the future to do great things. Right, and even it could motivate you to do something else, like if you don't succeed, you say, all right, that's not for me, and try something else. Sometimes even if you try really hard and you think you don't succeed at what you were going for, there's often times when you'll find yourself in a place much better than where you actually wanted to be, and you find that that's what was supposed to happen. And even if you try and you don't succeed, you can always try again and learn from your flaws, and like that's how people do things in life. Everyone learns from their mistakes. The Catechism tells us that faith means living in thanksgiving. Thanksgiving meaning gratitude. Let's go back to Colleen, where she'll share with us what she is grateful for. And how gratitude begins with our words. I think one of the simplest ways we can show our gratitude is to begin to use our words. Just be able to say, like, I, I appreciate you for what you are and, and what you do in my life. And it doesn't have to be a grand event. and It doesn't have to be an awkward moment. but. It should be something authentic and it should be something sincere. And I think when we begin to do that, we begin to create um, a lifestyle or a mindset that there are many wonderful things in this world. You know, it's so easy for us to turn to the negative, but we, we begin to focus on the positive, appreciate the gifts, um, or speak the truth of, of what people are in our lives, then we live in that joy. We live in that sense of gratitude. We need to drop this mentality of me and, and just about me and what I deserve and what I can create of myself because it does nothing to build up the mission of Christ. My favorite place to show gratitude is in my classroom when I'm working with my high school students because when we are able to express to one another um, that we see something wonderful in them or that we appreciate what they've done for us, it builds a sense of community in such a way where we feel like we want to do it again. We want to be true to ourselves. We want to serve one another. Um, and we know that that won't go unnoticed. It's not about feeling empowered because of what I have. It's about feeling stronger because of who I am. And that's how God made me to be, to use these gifts to give to other people. And they do the same for me, you know? They're very appreciative of who I am and what I can offer in that classroom environment. Being grateful is something we can share with others. Our country celebrates Thanksgiving to remind us that gratitude is something to be shared and shown in our words and actions. However, it's not something to practice one day of the year while eating lots of turkey. We should try to make a habit of practicing gratitude so that we can be a greater witness of Christ in the world. Next, we ask the teens on the street if they think gratitude can help others to grow closer in their relationship with God. Let's hear them now. Being grateful in our relationship helps us grow closer to God through understanding one another, loving in one another, caring for one another, overall just being better people. As we learn how to appreciate the little things in life. We can express a ton of gratitude to God for being able to send His only Son for us and loving us that much to do that. It makes us closer to God because we are able to appreciate so much more of what He did for us. Praying before a meal or praying before I go to bed, but I also really have that like conversation with God and um, sometimes that's throughout the day. Through prayer, general talking and just thanking Him for just different stuff that happens throughout the day or other stuff that I'm grateful for. Pray a lot. Um, it's kind of, you know, either talking to Him just about 
um, just what he's done in my life for the day or just what he's helped me through. Prayer, I feel, is like it can be anywhere, anytime. I pray to God every night just for little things for my family, my friends, my safety, and you know, maybe something going on in the world like a tragedy and whatnot to pray and hope everyone receive some kind of healing for it. I'm a big journaler, so I'll journal it out and like write it out to him, like, you know, a letter or something. I pray every night and I feel like it it helps a lot. Like it I feel more grateful for things. How can we show our gratitude to God and to others? Is by just being a positive person overall. Um, that means not abusing your body and being respectful to others. I think a big way of showing gratitude is when you're talking about like a material thing is to take care of it, whether it be your cell phone or your body because you were given your cell phone by your parents or you were given your body by God and you should take care of it. And I think that shows gratitude. I recently took a trip to New York City and one of the doormen was holding the door open for me and I was like, oh, thank you so much. And he couldn't believe I said, thank you. He's like, oh, you're so welcome. And um, I think just a simple, genuine thank you, like not to other people, but even like people say, oh my God, all the time, but why not, oh my God, thank you, you know, thank you for that last hour I lived, thank you for running water, for everything. We read in St. Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter two. So as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, walk in him, rooted in him and built upon him. And established in the faith you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. Because of the gift we receive in Christ, we should actually be overflowing with gratitude, covering all aspects of our lives. Finally, our spotlight guest, Colleen, talks to us about recognizing God working in us in the way we treat others. And how Christ is an example for us all, humbling ourselves and living our lives to the fullest. The central part of our faith is the sacrament of the Eucharist. And Eucharist means thanksgiving. It means to be grateful. It means to be able to say to one another, I appreciate what you've done for me, or I'm thankful that you're a part of my life. And when we do that, we are, we are calling on the God within us. We are using who we are made to be in His image. And so it naturally draws us closer to Him because we start recognizing that it's not just about me. It's not just about what I can do or what I can accomplished. It's about recognizing I'm able to do this because he's blessed me with this ability. I think of the part during Mass uh, when we say the Lord I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word and I shall be healed. The story of the centurion um, approaching Jesus uh, is so humbling you know that this man who so many people looked at as as bad he set an example for us about not being worthy to be in Jesus's presence and said, like, I know I don't deserve this, but please make me worthy enough to deserve, to deserve of your love. And, and God has done that for us. He's blessed us, he's given us our gifts, and he's calling us to use them all the time. Jesus always made himself lower than what his title, you know, should have, should have seen him as. You know, with the story of washing the apostles' feet. And I think that if our, our image of perfection, if our Savior can show us that it's not about glorifying self, then we should be able to do that. There was nothing in his ministry that was self-righteous. There was nothing about Jesus that made us want to feel like we were constantly sacrificing or constantly putting ourselves out for this ministry. You know, he said, I came so that you can have life and have it to the fullest. And having it to the fullest means living in the joy and the gratitude of what we're given. I like what she said, um, we're not worthy. That's, it's so true because really compared to God, we're just so little and unimportant. And for us to feel so entitled all the time and that we deserve everything is really kind of ridiculous. I mean, of all the people that were on earth, Jesus had the right to be entitled and he wasn't. He lowered himself to the point, like she said, of washing his disciples' feet. And I think that shows a great example. I also really like how Colleen said that we don't recognize and accept the gifts that we have. We always want something else, want something more. And we're all so talented. We all have these different quirks that make us individual and unique. And we need to embrace those instead of craving something that we're not. 
Another thing to think about is water. We always waste it, and we're not always thankful for having water. So, I mean, there's other places around the world that don't have it or that have dirty water, and we should be thankful that we have clean water. I know exactly what you're talking about. I just spent the last two weeks in Ghana, and um, we were given a trash can full of water to last four boys for like three to four days, and we had a half a little bucket of water to shower, like our whole body. So when I look on my taking of an hour long shower, I'm almost embarrassed to say that I guess I am part of this entitlement generation because I was like living these two weeks of simplicity without electricity, without this, and then I come back right into it and take, like I almost take running water for granted. When we say please and thank you, we show gratitude to others. When we keep a positive attitude and look on the bright side instead of complaining, we are offering gratitude to others. We show gratitude by listening attentively and being patient. We show gratitude by offering to help another person in need. Gratitude is first about our disposition towards God, but next is about showing that gratitude to those around us. With a grateful heart, we can combat the entitlement attitude and instead be servants of love and joy to those around us. In what ways are you being countercultural and showing your gratitude for all you've been given? We'd love to hear from you. Contact us at realfaithtv.com. Or share your thoughts with us on Twitter. And we'll leave you today with this from Colossians chapter 3. And let the peace of Christ control your hearts. The peace into which you are also called in one body. And be thankful. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Real, Real Faith, Faith TV. TV. God bless.